Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you again for another time in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for all you've done for us. In fact, Lord, you have brought us to the end of the month of, uh, of March. Today is the second to the last of the month. And Lord, we want to say we are grateful for all you've done throughout this month. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you, Lord, for every single thing of God. The things that are both palatable, unpalatable, pleasant, unpleasant, because, Lord, your words in everything, we should give you thanks. And so, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise and all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Know you know, God, that you are in charge. Know you know, God, that you are in control, that nothing, because really nothing, nothing happens without your knowledge. You are truly in charge. You are in charge over our affairs, over the thing that concerns us, O oh Lord, because truly you will not give us over to the will of the enemy. And we are grateful and we appreciate you for all that. Today, O oh God, as we gather again, my God, to hear your word, I pray that your spirit will take charge over this meeting. Lord, gather your children to this very page. Let them connect, O oh God, because, Father, it is your will that we love you. It is your will that we walk in obedience to your commandments. It is your will that we feel with the knowledge of your will. Yes, in all wisdom and skill, understand that we may walk with you of you unto all pleasing. This is your will, O God. And so, Father, Lord, your word says that when we come also to you, God, that will not go home empty-handed. I pray, therefore, that I should take charge over this meeting. Lord, meet everyone, O God, at their point of need. Heal the sick, O God. Set captives free. Command the blessing. Let your light shine, even by reason of the entrance of your word in our hearts. Father, Lord, let it all be to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Rebuke Satan on our behalf tonight. Therefore, Lord, I pray that your spirit will take charge over the internet, over the power supply, everywhere your children will be. Oh God, to connect to this meeting, your, may your spirit be mighty. May the blood of Jesus cover the places, O God, King of glory, and grant that your children will not be distracted, even as we sit at your feet tonight, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So welcome again to, to this midweek service. You know, we're continuing with uh, the same subject, love, the power of obedience. This is the third session, part three. Love, the power of obedience. Hallelujah. God has been saying some wonderful, great, mighty things to us. Hallelujah. Because we know, according to the scripture, even as we have seen at the beginning, it is not our giftings or callings that will determine whether we make heaven or not. It is strictly our obedience, our, our faith, our by the grace of God and our obedience to God. Hallelujah. Faith is important. Grace is important, but grace has works. Faith has works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cannot say we are, we are saved by grace and we throw caution to the wind. No. No. We are saved by grace through faith, but God... The Bible says that in Ephesians chapter 4, is it chapter, Ephesians chapter 2, that we are saved by grace through faith. Yes, and not of ourselves. Yes, it is the gift of God. And he said again that we are his workmanship. I think that is, that is important. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We must produce good works. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, having seen all that, we have been looking at the love, the relationship between the love of God and obedience. And today, we are going to be seeing further what it means to have the love of God and influence of love or the part that the love of God and have plays in our work with God. So, the power of obedience is love. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Someone said recently, you know, that love can make you to do crazy things for the person that you love. He said love can make you to do crazy things for the person that you love. And the person is right. 
the person is right. But the kind of law I believe the person is talking about is not the love that is unconditional. It's a law that is born out of knowledge. It is law that is born out of knowledge. It is a law that is born out of reasons. You have a reason. Okay? Like a mother will fight for her child. A, a father will fight for her child. A husband will fight for the husband. Husband will, wife will fight for the husband. Wife, husband will fight for the wife. You, you know, I mean, protective. You understand? You 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 want to love somebody. You want to you want to please somebody that 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 loves you, that helps you. You, you understand that? There is a reason. That is filial. We are not talking about filial. We're talking about agape. The love, the the, the, the love God God wants us to know, to be rooted and grounded in it, is the love of God, which is called agape. Agape. The Greek word agape. Okay, and the Bible says that the, the, this very love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Spirit of God. It has been shed abroad when we got saved, when you got saved, when you got born again, the Spirit of the Lord brought this love into your heart. Hallelujah. Shed it abroad. But you know everything, everything that God has put in man from the time we're conceived, even from the time we, are, we got born again, they have the power to grow. They have the power to grow. Like the scripture will say, even though the grace of God is upon us, but the Bible says we should grow in grace. So we have to also grow in this love. Even though that the love of God is shed abroad in your heart, you know, you have to grow in this love. That is why the Bible says we should be rooted and grounded in love. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. He said, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you, he will grant, that the Father will grant you. May the Father grant us. May the Lord grant you. May the Father grant me. I pray this prayer for myself as well. That according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Strengthened by his spirit in the inner man. 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. In other words, you must believe that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. The scriptures say Christ in you, the hope of glory. So you must believe that Christ is in you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I believe Christ is in me. I don't need to feel his presence, but I believe that he's in me. Hallelujah. You must believe he's in you. Okay, that you being rooted and grounded in love, you being rooted and grounded in love, rooted and grounded in love. Which love? The love that was shed abroad in our hearts when we got saved. We should be rooted and grounded in this love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. Did you see that now? This love passeth knowledge. It passes all knowledge. It goes beyond knowledge. Knowledge of, oh, it's my wife. I mean, she's my wife. It's my husband. It's my child. It's my daughter. It's my son. Oh, it's my friend. Oh, it's my father. It's my mother. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond such knowledge. Amen. This love we're talking about go beyond. Oh, he helped me yesterday. I love him because he helped me. Oh, I love him because all this help. I love him because all this greeting me. I love him because he gave me job. I love him. Oh no. So it goes beyond what someone has done for you or any physical natural relationship you can ascribe to that uh, uh, the relation. You know, it go beyond that. That he said that, that, that you may know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. The above scriptures simply say that we should be what? Rooted and grounded in the love of God, the unconditional love of God, because it passes knowledge. It's unconditional. So you cannot ascribe it to anything. You can't say, oh, I love this person because of this. I love God because of this. You know, just the way God loves us. The Bible says when we were dead in sins and trespasses, 
when we were dead in sins and trespasses, yet God loves us. He loved us and then sent Jesus to die. We were not qualified to be loved. If God was going to love us or send Jesus to die for us, for a reason, if there was a reason, I mean, then, I mean we're not qualified to be loved. But the Bible says, while we were yet dead in sins and trespasses, God sent his son Jesus. In other words, he loved us unconditionally. We didn't merit it. So this love of God we're talking about is not something you, you merit, anybody merit. You don't love the person, whether the person of your tribe or your race or, you know, the love go beyond race. Oh, it's a black man, it's a white man. You know, you just love. You just love the person. I mean, it's my townsman, it's my village man, it's my whatever. Oh, it's my country fellow. Oh, you go beyond all that. You just love. Why? Because God has put that love in your heart. So when we grow in that love, when you grow and you establish in that love, it becomes very easy for you to do the will of God. Hallelujah. Now, this love, he said that we may be filled with the fullness of God. We may be filled with the fullness of God because this love is the nature of God. This agape love is the nature of God. And being filled with this kind of love is to be filled with the fullness of God. Why? Because God is love and love is God. So when you are filled, when we are filled, grounded and rooted in this love, what it simply means that we are filled with the fullness of God. We are filled with the fullness of God. We, we love men unconditionally the way Christ loved us unconditionally. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the more you are rooted and grounded in this law, the easier, hear this, the more you are rooted and grounded in this love, the easier and faster your obedience to God becomes. The more you are rooted and grounded in this love, the what? The easier and faster your obedience to God becomes. As the obedience, therefore, your obedience, therefore, comes from your heart, where the love is. It's not from your head. Your obedience comes from your heart, from that place where the unconditional love is. Because you love God unconditionally, you are not looking at any reason. You don't say, oh, I, I, I love God, I'm going to obey God because if I obey Him, this will happen or that. No, you just love God. You just love God and you do whatever God asks you to do. As long as you are convinced that this is God speaking. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I say your obedience, your obedience will become what? Struggle-free. Your obedience will become struggle. People struggle to obey God because they don't have the love of God in their heart. Talk more of being rooted in it. The reason a lot of people struggle to obey God. The reason people struggle. To walk in obedience because they don't have that unconditional love. When you love God, nobody will tell you. People won't pump you. People won't force you to, I mean, like, push you to do the will of God. You, you understand? People won't push you. You just, you say, oh, God has said it, and you are sure God said it. I mean, that's it. That settles it. I believe it, and I will do it. Because, I mean, I love God. Hallelujah. I love God, so I will do whatever will please God. I love Him. I love Him. I love God. The scripture says that perfect love casts away fear, which has torment. Perfect love casts away fear, which has torment. Why? What's the relationship? Now, many times, why people find it difficult to obey God is because they think that when they obey God, their life will become worse, or maybe they, they, they will not enjoy life. With that understanding, first of all, that same God that is asking you to do this has loved you or still loves you. God will not want to do it that will hurt you or harm you or diminish your life, but rather will improve your life. But you are afraid, people get afraid to obey God. Because, say for example, people get afraid to give, okay, maybe you are in the service or you are somewhere in a meeting and God says to you, that thing, give it up. So you is like, and you know that God is speaking to you. 
It's like if I give this enough, what am I going to do? How am I going to go home? Or what will I now have? So the fear, the fear of not giving up that thing is because you don't love God to obey the voice of God that has just spoken to you. If you love God, you will not hold on to anything. More so when God says, give up this thing. When God says, give up this thing, you will, not hold, you will not hold on to that thing. Because you know that you love God and God loves you. God loves you. So he said, fear, fear does what? Has torment. Fear has torment. That fear, therefore, that makes you think that when you obey God's instruction, your life will be worse off is because you don't love God. It's literally because you don't love God. That thing that makes you to always withhold. That thing that always makes you think that, oh, fine, make, you, you always have a reason not to obey God. If you truly really don't love God, that's the basic truth. If you love God, nobody will force you. If you love God from your heart, and you know God loves you, first and foremost, listen, you will do it. You will not struggle to obey God. You will not struggle to obey God. You will not struggle at all. You know that God loves you. You know the plans of God for you are plans of good and not of evil. You know the plans of God. He said, I know the plans I have for you. So how can that, how can someone that have good plans, good thoughts for you, suddenly the same person is asking you to do this and you think the person wants to kill you or harm you? The thing you are afraid because you don't love him. You are afraid because you don't love him. You are afraid just like the young, the rich young ruler. That the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says Jesus Christ loved the young man. He loved the young man. And he said to him, when the young man said, Lord, Master, what shall I do inherit eternal life? And the Lord said to him, you know the commandment. And then he began to blab. Oh, I, I, I don't commit sin. I've been a, I give, I do this, I do that, obey the commandments and all those. But the Lord looked at him and said, the Bible said the Lord loved him, looked at him and said, one thing you lack. One thing you lack. And he's like, what is that? He said, go sell all that you have. But don't forget, because Jesus Christ loved him. So Jesus was not going to rob him. The Lord didn't say, go sell all you have and bring them to me. He said, go sell all you have and give to who? Give to the poor. But the Lord loved him for, for telling him to do that. But the man, the young man got angry. Why? Because he doesn't love God. If he loved God, he will not be afraid because he was afraid that when he sells all and give every all the proceeds to the poor, he was going to become poor. He didn't know that the Lord lost and God was going to multiply his wealth. Because when the disciples, when the young man, when the Lord John Christ, after seeing what the action of the young man said, how difficult it is. For the rich to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, For it is easier for the for the for the head of a camel to part to the eye of a needle. And the disciples asked him, But if it be so, who then can be saved? But the Lord replied them and said, Listen, with God all things are possible. Nobody that will need the gospel or for his sake that will not receive a hundredfold here in this world. Which means the Lord loved him, wanted to multiply the young man's wealth by hundred. Hundredfold. But he didn't understand that. He got angry because he didn't love God. He was thinking that God wanted to make him poor. <laughs> so, child of God, that fear that will make people not obey God. That fear, when you love God, that fear will completely diminish or disappear from your life. That fear will disappear. That fear will disappear. You will simply obey God because it becomes a natural thing. It becomes a natural thing. So when the Spirit of the Lord was praying this prayer to Apostle Paul, it is because of the importance of this issue of love in relation to our obedience that we should be granted 
rooted and grounded in the love of God. You just have to pray that prayer for yourself. That, that God grant me to be rooted and grounded in your love. Grant me, Lord, to be rooted and grounded in your love. So that my obedience, my walk with you, will be stress-free. Stress, no struggle. No struggles at all. No struggles at all. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So perfect love in your heart, child of God, will send this fear away. First John chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. He said, Hearing is our love made perfect. Hearing that our love be made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Get that? There is no fear in love. There is no fear in this love. Agape, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts it out fear. There is no fear in love. You are not thinking, if I do this, if I, if I, will, will I be hurt? Will I not be hurt? Am I going to lose something? Am I not going to lose something? Such thoughts will not come in. They don't come in at all. If I serve God, will my life be better? Will my life be get worse? If I close my shop to go to church, I mean, am I going to lose my mark? Am I going to lose my customers? Am I not going to, um, or if I, if I, all those thoughts will not come in. Those thoughts will not come in. If God calling you, if you love God, simply obey. Because God will not call you to come when your life will be in danger. Rather, God is ready to save you when you are in danger. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He that feareth is like he that feareth is not grounded or rooted in the love of God. He that fears. If you love God, child of God, like I said, you will keep his commandment. You will keep his commandment. You will keep his commandment. You obey his commandments. Naturally, simple. John chapter 14, verse 21. He said, He that had my commandments, having the commandment is one. That is, knowing the commandment is one. Obeying the commandment is another. He that had my commandment and keepeth them, that is, that doeth them. You have the commandment, you are keeping it, you are obeying it. He it is that loveth me. Did you see that now? He it is that loveth me. So it means if you love God, you will keep his commandment. You will obey his commandment. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And I will manifest to him. Judas, verse 22 says, Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, if a man love me, hmm, he will keep my words. You can't say you love him and you don't keep his word. You know I said last week, and the scripture said that faith without works is dead. And I said, love without obedience is dead. And I said again, I said, like the scripture says, show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my work. So also, show me your love without your obedience, and I will show you my love by my obedience to the word of God. You can't say you love God and you don't keep his word, you don't obey him. Look at the Lord John Christ saying, he said, he said, if a man love me, do you love God? Do you love God? He said, if a man love me, he will do what? He will keep my he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode 
with him. Verse 24. He that loveth me not, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. So, show me your love without your obedience. Or show me a man that does not obey God. Show me a man that doesn't obey God. And I will show you, I will tell you the man that, has no, that doesn't love God. Because he said, he that loveth me not, will not do what? Will not keep my saying. So if you don't keep his word, if you are not obedient to the word of the Lord, then it simply means that you don't love God. You may be singing, Lord, I love you. It doesn't matter. It is easier said than done. It is not he that say yeah, that's important now. That the Torah will say, he said, little children, don't be deceived. It is not he who says, I'm the righteousness of God and confess it here and there that is righteous. He said, but he that doeth righteous, there is a doing. So even if you sing it and your voice so melodious, Lord, I love you, and whatever you put it there, and you don't obey God, you are just lying. You are just, you are just a liar, simple. That's what it means. Mm, thank you, Jesus. And the word which you hear is not mine, but my father's which sent me. So did you see that? When the word of God we are hearing, the word of Christ is not his word, but the father's. So when you are not obeying him, you are not obeying the father. And it means you don't love the father either. You cannot love God. What it means is that you cannot love God. You cannot love God and not obey his commandment. Whether it is to preach, let's bring it down now. The commandment, whether it is to preach, because he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. You can't tell God I love you. And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you don't go into the world and preach the gospel. You don't preach the gospel. So where is that love? You cannot love God and not obey his command, whether it's to preach the gospel or to live a godly life or to give your tithes or your offerings to him or to do whatever he asks you to do or ask you not to do. Because there are things that God will say, don't do this. If God says, don't do it, if you love God, you will not do it. You can't love him and do the thing that he asks you not to do. You can't love him and don't do the thing that he has asked you to do. Then you have the love of God. Whatever he says don't do, you will not do it. Whatever he says do, you will do it. And like I said, your obedience will become stress-free. It becomes stress-free. Why? Because you are loving him unconditionally. You are not afraid because that love in you has removed fear. Has cast away fear. Perfect love. That is why you will be rooted and grounded in love of God. You obey him, child of God. Yes. Yeah, you obey him not because of the blessings that are attached. When you love God, you will obey him not because of any blessings. Say for example, you know, so in some places they say, in some places they say, ah, when it is time to give offering, say, uh, offering time, and what you hear is blessing time. So let's say, assuming there is no blessing attached to the giving, will you still give him? Will you still give to God? Assuming there is no promise that when you give, it shall be given back to you, good measure, pressed and shaken together and run over. Assuming that promise is not there, child of God, if you have the love of God in your heart, you will give, irrespective of whether there's a promise or not. That's the love we're talking about. Let me ask you, because as he loved us, so he wants us to love him. What do you, what do you think that God will give from you by sending Jesus Christ to save you? No. What do you think God will gain or stand to gain from us by loving us and sending Jesus to die for us? What does God stand to gain from you? You in particular. What do you think God stands to gain from you?
But the church said he loved you and he still loves you. He loves you. So when you love him, child of God, I say when you love him, your giving, your paying your tithe will not be because of what? Any promise. But it will be what? Natural. Because you love him unconditionally. Your giving, your tithing, your walking in his commandment will be natural. Your walking obedience will be natural. Why? Because you love him. You love him. So when you give your offerings and pay your tithes without the love of God, hear this now. When you give your offerings and then you pay your tithe without the love of God in your heart, you know what it means? It means you are doing it for a reason, a selfish reason. And that's exactly the reason most of the time. People serve God because they, I mean, God, we are looking for something. We give because there is something we believe we, want, we stand to gain. Offering time, blessing time. As in offering time, there is no blessing. Hello, someone. As you mean God said, well, look, go into all the world and bring the gospel. He said, you have not, you have not, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you that you go forth and bear and your fruit should remain. And there is not that promise that you should come back after your fruit has remained and ask whatever you want. As you mean that promise is not there, will you still do it? Your love for God will make you do whatever will make God happy. Not your happiness now, God's own happiness. We understand that God has promises for us, which are also, you know, which are also based on certain commandments that He has given to us. But we are saying that when you love God, from the scripture here, when you love God, your obedience, you're doing the thing that God said you should do. You will not, you, it will not be based on, you will not be thinking, okay, ah, you are giving a promise, so let me do it. No. You simply do that thing, yet the blessing will follow. The blessing will follow, definitely. The promise will still come to pass, definitely. But your number one reason for doing that thing is not because of the blessing. But the blessing ultimately will follow. But you did it without thinking about the blessing. You know, you know, we're talking on Sunday, we are, we are, there's a series we are, uh, we are going through on Sundays, and I did say that when I left my job, like, like I said, when people will say, okay, before you become a full-time pastor, you have to resign and all those stuff. Well, well we've done all that. But listen, when I, when I was resigning my job, I didn't resign to go to the ministry with the idea, oh, when I go to the ministry, I'm going to make money. I didn't even go to ask my employers at that time, how much are you, when I resigned my job, I know how much I was earning. How much will you pay me when I come, how much are you going to pay me? That thought didn't come in at all. It didn't come in at all. It didn't even cross my mind. All that was there is, oh, I love God and God has called me. Oh, I must obey him. I must answer the call. That was what was paramount in my mind. The church indeed, they gave me something. They paid me. They paid me. But the truth also is that what I was given was not like what I was earning before. It didn't matter. I didn't go to the ministry. To, I didn't carry the Bible because of what I will get. The most important thing was God has saved me. I love God. He has called me. I will answer the call. That was what was important. And that is what is important today. Thank you, Jesus. So your giving, your whether paying your tithe or giving your offering should not be because there is something. If you love God, you don't do it because you love God. Unconditionally. No reason. Why am I doing Oh, I don't do it because I love God. Oh, I don't love God. 
I just love God. That's why I'm doing it. And you, God will still reward you for that matter. Listen, God, it's not that when you do, God will not reward you. But you are not doing it because of the reward. <coughs> Father, give us understanding. Like I said, so when you give without love, without love, it means you are giving it for the saving. It means you are giving it because there is something you want to stand to gain from it. What that means is that you don't love God. Because the, 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 the another uh, uh, result of that is that when you give, when you are giving and giving and giving, the result doesn't come, you stop giving. Because it's like, I've been giving since all the wealth, all the money I've been giving since, all this I've been going, I've been going to church, nothing is coming, I've not seen any result. We now know where your heart is. You don't love God. I've been giving, I've been giving my tithes, and nothing has happened in my life. Uh, yes, we now know where your heart is. Remember, the love of God doesn't fail. So when you do it out of love, that love will not fail. You are not looking for the result, but the result will eventually come. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You are not looking for result, but the result will come. You are not looking for prosperity, prosperity will come. In love, first of all, obey him because you love him. Oh, Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, hear this. When you love God, when you love God, you will desire to please Him and do whatever He requires of you or whatever He asks you to do. When you love Him, when you love Him, paying your tithes or giving to the work of the kingdom of God or being involved in ministry, while you are still living an ungodly life, hear this very well. You pay tithes. You give to the work of the ministry. Okay? You are an usher. You are a, a, a greeter. You are a pastor. You are whatever. For you, you are working. Okay? But you are still living an ungodly life or unrighteous life. What that means is that you don't have the love of God. You don't have the love of God in your heart. You don't have the love of God in your heart. Because giving your tithe and walking in the joy, that is not the only commandment that God has commanded you. God wants you to live an ungodly God wants to live a godly life. He said the grace that brings salvation is teaching you to deny ungodliness. So if you love God, you should deny ungodliness. You should live righteously. You should live soberly. Waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you love God. Amen. Now, in fact, your offering, your titan, if you love God, should not stop you from being impartial. Should not suffer from being impartial in your judgment or from showing mercy. Okay? Because some people feel that, okay, my good will save me. My often I give tithes, so therefore, if others will take care of mine. It doesn't take care of anything. It won't take care of anything. Your offering, your tithe that you are working will not take care of your sin. What covers sin? The Bible says charity covers the multitude of sin. Charity is charity. Agape love is what we cover sin. Charity, love. Because you can give without love, like 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You can give, can burn your, burn your, give your word to be burned because of someone, but it's not born out of love. The Bible says what it will profit you nothing. So your giving or tithing should not stop you from being impartial in your judgment or from showing mercy or from walking in righteousness. In other words, living a godly life. And in the same way, your being impartial 
You're living a righteous life, so to speak. You're showing mercy. Or living by faith should not stop you from giving your offerings, your paying your tithe, and obey God's commandment in any other area of your life. You see, this was what the Pharisees did. That the Lord Jesus had to rebuke them. They were paying tithes of armies and kumis and all that. And it's, it's because they, they, they left the weightier matters of the law, of judgment, of righteousness, and of faith. He said, this they ought to have done, and not to leave the former undone. You must do all. <laughs> you must do all. You must do all. Your tithing, your offering should not stop you from living a holy life. Should not stop you from living a godly life. Your giving must not stop from living. And your living a godly life does not mean, oh, I don't commit sin, I don't do this one, but you don't pay tithes. You don't give offering. You don't give to the things of the, thing of, 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 of the kingdom. Then you are deceiving yourself. Where then do you love him? Because the same God that said, look, thou shalt not kill. It is the same God that said, what? Bring ye your tithes and your offering, I might be meeting my house. It is the same God. It is the same God that said, well, go into all the world and pray the gospel to every creature. It is the same God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Love will make you to do everything or anything that God says that you should do. Why? This love we are talking about is not selective. The love of God is not selective. In that word, you select what you do. You select it and select what you will not do. Like some people want to set standard for themselves, how to serve God. You can't set a standard for yourself. It's not God you are serving. He said, thou shalt not add to this book of the law. Thou shalt not remove. You should not add. Don't bring your own and don't remove from God from what God has said. Don't determine how you will serve God. It's not God you are serving. If you serve God, contrary to what they laid down, principle that law he has given that is not God you are serving you are serving yourself or you are serving a demon you are serving a spirit that is not of God it's not God you serve God based on his own word on his own instruction on his own terms a God that gives you the terms by which you serve him not you choosing the terms oh I know when to go to church no you don't did he say pray all the time Pray all the time. Did he say don't forsake the assembling? Don't say, oh no, it doesn't matter. I, 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 I mean, I don't need to go to church. You don't have to say that. Don't forsake the assembly. I know how to read the Bible myself. Then why did God put pastors and teachers, the fivefold ministry? Why did God put them in the church? God said they are for the building of the church, for the defining of the church. If you can help yourself, there will not be teachers in the church. If you can teach yourself, there will not be pastors in the church. So you don't set your standard. Don't say, ah, this is how I will give. God say, give tithe. I say, no, I don't. I will not be giving tithe. I know I don't give offering. I don't go get. You are not serving God. You are serving a demon. <laughs> Obey all. Do all. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I bless you. So you are not selective. You don't be selective when you are serving God. I, I would like to do this one. Oh, I will not do this one. No, you don't have that power. You don't have that power. You don't have that power. Oh, this one I will obey. Oh, oh God, you are not. I won't obey this one. No, you don't have that power. You become like Naaman. Naaman, that the same place I will seek. They say, go and dip yourself in the in the in, 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 in River Jordan seven times. They must say, are there no better rivers like Habana and the Far Fame and whatever that can go and dip myself? The man would have come back home with his leprosy. He would have returned back to, to Samaria with what? We say with I've been away in Syria with leprosy, with the same leprosy. You don't go and tell the man of God or tell God, oh God, you see, this is what I want to do. Why can't I do it this way? He said, dip yourself seven times 
He said, no, I will, I will only two times to be enough. You on your own. O-Y-O. <laughs> that, that's what they call it. On your own. Do what? Dip yourself seven times. Which river? Not Abana. Not Fafi. Where? In Jordan. And thou shalt be clean. Period. You like, do it if you like. Of course, it's your choice. God is not going to force you. He's not going to compel you. But you cannot select what you, you cannot choose the one you will do and what you, unless God tells you that, okay, I put this, you choose, of course. But this is the one I if you say do this one this way, you have no choice. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. He said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cummins, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. You have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done. Did you see that? Which are the things they ought to have done? Law, judgment, mercy, and faith. And not to leave the other undone. Which is the other? Paying of your tithe of what? Of meat, anise, and cumin. You don't leave them undone. Don't say because I'm going to be walking in faith and walking in judgment and walking in mercy. That I will. Do all. Do all. The Pharisees paid and encouraged pain of tithe. But they refuse to obey God in the matters of judgment, mercy, and faith. What do you call that? Selective. They, are being, they were being selective in their obedience. And it was wrong. If it was not wrong, Jesus would not have what rebuked them or braided them. It was wrong. It is still wrong today. You can't select or choose the one you will obey. He said, haven't done all. We are going to see that. We are commanded to do all. The scripture says that having done all to stand, then stand with the shield of faith, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, the shoes for the preparing of man for the preaching of the gospel of peace. So you can't wear helmet of salvation, put on the breastplate of righteousness, I mean then the belt of truth, and you say, no, 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 I can't wear the shoe of, uh, pre the shoe of preparation of the gospel, I can't wear that one. You can't do that. You can't do that. The, the question is, do you love God? The truth is that if you have the love of God in your heart, all this one, you see them as nothing. No, you see them as nothing. Ordinary filial love, ordinary filial, conditional love, people do crazy things. People do crazy things for ordinary filial love. Talk more of Agape, unconditional love. <laughs> hey, sorry. I'm sorry I've heard stories of a young man, a young man who is in love with a young lady. The young lady carries, goes to fetch water. And the young man, out of love, will take and say, let me carry it for you. Carry the bucket of water for, for, for the young lady. <laughs> love. Yeah? People do crazy things because of love. You understand my point? You saw what happened recently at the Oscars. I mean, if you read, I mean, if you follow the story about uh, Will Smith. No, so, but you understand that I'm, but I'm quoting what he quoted. That is what he said. I'm not taking a position, but that's what he said. You understand my point? That when you love somebody, you do crazy things. When you love people, you do crazy things. Parents fight for their children. Some parents will fight for their children. I remember many years ago when I was doing a secular job in the office. I don't know what happened. I was had a little misunderstanding with all my colleagues. And I don't know, I made reference to the mom. Not abusing money. The next thing he gave me a dirty slap on the face in the office. We're all managers. It was like how the young people in the office were like, 
manager should want to fight. And of course, I just looked at him. I said, well, I can't slap you. He said, when they asked him, he said, why did that bring his mother into this matter? Why did I bring the mother into this matter? That's exactly what we're talking about. People do crazy things because of love. But I didn't slap him. People do crazy things because of their wives. They do crazy things because of their husbands. They do crazy things because of their children. Children do crazy things because of their parents. Why do you abuse my mother? Why do you talk to my father? Why do you bring my father into this? So if all that is because of the conditional love, what about the unconditional love of God? Unconditional love of God. You have no just love God and then you do whatever he says to you to do. Ephesians chapter 6, 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, having what? Done, not some, all to stand. Having done all to stand, you have done everything to stand. Stand therefore having your loins get about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench the fairy dust of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So, if God said you have carried the shield of faith, when well, He said pray always, you can't say because I've carried the shield of faith, I have the one the helmet of salvation, I will not pray. You can't do that. If you love God, first of all, you will do all this. But God has a reason also for asking you to do this. There are benefits for your own good. Praying always with all manner of prayer and supplication in spirit, and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. Pray for all sins. So when you love God and God say pray for people, many times people's prayer is me. God bless me, my father, my mother, my parents, my this, or well, my children, bless my work. Do you pray for your pastor? Do you pray for members of that place where you worship? Do you pray for all men to be saved? If you love God, you do what God said you should do. Pray for all men. You pray for everybody. Pray for all men. And I repeat, because God said pray for all men. You pray for all men. You are simply obeying God because he said, do it. The scripture says that evil association will corrupt good manners. Therefore, when a child of God listens and follows the ungodly or the unlearned or the scorners in their scornful ways, he will definitely find himself walking in disobedience. What happens? You walk in disobedience, walk in rebellion against God. Okay? Because they, the ungodly, will keep that love in your heart. You love God. The same way, you see a young man in love with a young woman and he's carrying a bucket of water. What do people they say? I don't say woman, woman rapper or whatever they call them here. Woman rapper. Oh, look at that. I mean, how can he be doing that because of love? Yeah? How can he do that because of love? If Christ is not taking that love, we what? We die. Don't let people keep the love of God in your heart. Don't let people talk you out of loving God. Because what that means that they will talk you into being what? Rebellious and disobedient. Don't forget what the Lord Jesus Christ said. We have seen that in scripture. It's not your service now. It's not the things you are doing. It's not your calling. He said on that day, some will come to me and say, Lord, 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 we, we did this in your name. We cast out them. We say, we turn to them and say, get, from, get away from me. You that walk iniquity. 
you can't be you can't you can't be disobedient and they say you walk in righteousness you that walk in iniquity means that they were disobedient they were rebellious they were disobedient they were rebellious thank you lord lord we bless your name hallelujah now look at this first corinthians first corinthians 13 i mean 15 33 34 be not deceived evil communication corrupts good manners awake to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of god i speak this to your shame some have not the knowledge of god so how do you want somebody who have no knowledge of god to not tell you how to love god to not tell you how to relate with god when you relate with such people they will simply discourage you they will kill that they will kill that fire your zeal for they will kill it they will kill it he said, I speak this to your shame. I speak this to your shame. Why to your shame? Because you that know God, how do you allow someone who doesn't know God to tell you how to serve God? God has told you how to worship Him. God has told you what to do. Then you allow someone who doesn't know God, who doesn't have God, you will not let the person be telling you what to do to please God. Do you tell them how to please your God? Listen, you are the covenant child of the covenant keeping God. You are the child of light. You are the citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You should not allow a child of darkness or the kingdom of Satan to interpret to you the scriptures. Don't allow them. Don't allow them to show you how to worship God. Don't allow them. Don't allow the ungodly, unbeliever, no matter how close they are to you, don't allow so the God. They will kill your relationship with God. They will kill that love. When you will suffer it, the same people will be the first to mock at you. They will mock you. They will scorn you. They will make jests of you. When the result of your disobedience and rebellion begin to manifest, the same people who discourage you from loving God and obeying Him, the same people will be the first to laugh at you. And tell you how foolish you are. <laughs> the same will tell you that I might that, that, that don't you have sense? If I say don't do it, don't you have sense to don't you have sense to do what you want to do? Do you understand that? Advise yourself. Advise yourself. Thank you, Jesus. So you don't allow the natural man that is blind to spiritual matters to lead you. That is born again, that have the spirit of God in you. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man cannot read the things of God. So you can't let the unbeliever to begin to tell you how to love God, how to do the things of God, how to follow God, how to obey God. He said the natural man, the unbeliever, receiving not the things of God, of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. What is what, what is wisdom to you is foolishness unto them. So how do you, how do you express somebody who, who, who in whose mind the things of God are foolishness? How do you allow somebody like that to not begin to teach you when you say you have God in you and you love God <laughs> always pray that God should grant to be rooted and grounded in his love when you are rooted and grounded in the love of God I think to some extent or large extent it will help you not to listen to some people because truly when you love somebody you know love has made some people to disobey their parents love Love has made young girls, young boys to disobey their people. Love. They're not talking about the love of God. I'm talking about the, the just the ordinary natural love or errors. They talk more about love. When you love God, nobody will mislead you. You love God, you are just loved Him. 
Someone will tell you, what are you doing? He says, just leave me alone. I just love my God. Why are you doing this? I have not explained to you. No explanation. Why are you going to church? Oh, listen to me. I have no explanation. I just love my God. <laughs> and I'm walking obedient to what he says, I should not forsake the assembly. I should not forsake coming together with other believers. Simple. I don't have any other explanation. I don't, just leave me and my God. Period. Thank you, Jesus. I think we'll take this and stop here. We'll take this, the, 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 this scripture and stop here. Take this scripture and stop here. The scripture said that the world, the blind will not let the blind know that they fall into the judge. So if you are not matured in the love of God, not perfect in love, and you allow the unbeliever to lead you or listen to them, all of you fall into a ditch. Luke chapter 6, six verse 39. And he spoke a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Shall they both not fall into the ditch? I pray you don't fall into a ditch. And may you not allow an unbeliever to lead you out of the word of God and then lead you into a ditch. May you not allow an unbeliever, a natural man, somebody who is not even grounded in the word of God, to lead you. Otherwise, you do what? You fall into a ditch. You don't teach them how to live their life. You don't teach them how to serve their master, the devil. So don't let any unbeliever teach you how to serve the living God. God has given you his word. Simply love him and obey him. It may look difficult to your flesh. But listen, follow the word of God. Love God. God loves you. God will not tell you anything that will destroy you. Not as you're doing that will destroy you. Do you understand that? God will not give you any instruction that will destroy you or diminish or devalue your life. No. So follow God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They know how to obey and serve their God and master. And how to use the laws of the kingdom of darkness to succeed, to get rich and get famous. So don't follow them. Okay? Don't follow them. Follow your God. God has given you also what? Laws that will make you prosperous. Laws that will make you rich. Laws that will take you to the next level of glory. Obey your Father. But don't follow God. Don't obey God because of these things. When you love God, you will do those things. But the, the, the result is that you will get promoted. The result is that you get what? You get lifted to the next level of glory. The, the, the result is that you will get healed in your body. I mean, you love God. Your obedience has reward. Your obedience has reward. We saw, we, I mean, we saw Jesus Christ. He loved the Father. He obeyed the Father. And he yielded to death. And the Bible said God raised him up, lifted him from death, and gave him the name that's above every name. God exalted him. He loved God. So when you love God, and then you obey God naturally, because you love him and walk in obedience to his commandment. Listen, there are blessings that will follow. There are blessings that will follow. God will lift you up. God will exalt you. Amen. The blessings will come to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are going to stop here. Okay? We're going to stop here and then we continue. We continue next week, Wednesday. Hallelujah. I believe you have been blessed. It's exciting to know that when we love God, you know, obedience becomes what? Stress-free. Obedience becomes a second nature. You obey God from your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So, if you have been part of this meeting, you have not given your life to Christ, that love is far from you. So, just pray this prayer with me. Almighty God, I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God who died for me whom you raised up from the dead and he's alive. Jesus, save me. Come and wash away my sins. I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. Let your love, unconditional love, agape fill my heart and grant me the grace and therefore that by reason of your love I will walk in obedience to you, my God. Thank you for saving me because I receive you today, Jesus. I have received eternal life. Because I receive you today, Jesus, I'm not a child of God. I belong to the kingdom of God. I belong to the family of God. 
all my challenges, problems, whatever, I hand them over to you. My life now is in your hands. Take care of me. Lead me. Direct me. And lead me to everlasting kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And brethren, if you have heard this message, why not just pray for yourself? Ask the Lord, Lord, grant me to be rooted and grounded in your love. Let your love be rooted and your conditional love be rooted and grounded in my heart. So that love, my work with you, my obedience will be born out of your love and it will be stress-free. Let my obedience be from the heart, the heart of love. So that I don't struggle again, oh God. I don't want to struggle serving you, my God. Because it is not by power, it is not by might. Your love will make it easy. Your love will make it light. Grant me, O oh God, to be rooted and grounded in your love. Fill my heart with your love. I want to love you more than I have ever done before. I want to please you all the days of my life. I hand over everything to you tonight. You know what I have need of before I came. Have mercy. Help me tonight. Let your light shine. Let your light shine in my life. Let your light shine in my life. Let your light shine upon me. Fight my battles. Take care of the challenges. Remove the obstacles out of my way. You have brought me this far. This day after tomorrow is the, year, is the month of April. I commit the month of April into your hand. Go before me, Lord, into the month of April. Take my hand and lead me through the month of April. Clear my path for the work and activity of Satan and his agents. Grant that I will go out in peace and return back home in peace. Grant, of oh God, that every blessing you are packaged for me in the month of April, that none will be denied me or withheld from me. Child of God, pray for the month of April. Let every moment of April be covered with the blood of Jesus. Let the Lord rebuke Satan, whatever the devils have planned and packaged and put in place to undermine the will of God concerning you in the month of April. Let the Lord destroy them now. May the angel of the Lord go ahead of you to destroy them. Yes, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you, my brother, my sister, that the Lord who has brought you this far, may the Lord not keep silent in your life. May the Lord not withhold help from you because he said he will never leave you nor forsake you. So that you can boldly say that the Lord is your helper. You should not be afraid of what the devil can do because with God on your side, Satan can do nothing. I therefore pray that the Lord is going to uphold you with the right hand of his righteousness. I pray the Lord keep you by the power of his name. I pray that the Lord who has brought you this far should hold your hand and lead you Every mountain, every river, every ocean, every crookedness on your way, may the Lord take them out of the way. May the Lord make your ways that are crooked to become straightened out. All the mountains, the Lord remove them. The valley, the Lord fill them. Every line in wait of Satan and his agents on your way, may the Lord go and clear your path of the activities and presence of such devils and their agents in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord grant you that you go out in peace and return back home in peace. All the blessings that God has prepared for you before the foundation of the world to be your portion in the month of April. May the Lord grant that none shall be withheld from you or denied you. Even the blessing that will come, God ordained for you for this month of March. Tomorrow is the last day of the month. May the Lord honor his word, his promise, and grant that the blessing will come even as a last minute miracle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord grant that testimony will not lack in your mouth. That you may have reasons to testify of the goodness, the grace, the faithfulness of God before the sons of men. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. People are looking for solutions. People are looking for answers to their questions. May the Lord use you. 
May the Lord help you that people will see him in your life and your life therefore will be a shining light and a testimony and a signboard to draw people into the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord rebukes Satan on your behalf. Everywhere they have taken your name to for evil, the Lord set them on fire. And all of those who are gathered together to trouble you from now on, may the Lord scatter them and beat them down under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak peace upon your life. I speak peace upon your business. I speak peace upon your job. I speak peace of God upon your marriage. I speak peace of God upon all that concerns you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord shut out the mouth of the wicked. Any man that will rise up against you, I command by the word of the Lord that they keep shut up in darkness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord keep you, my brother, my sister. The Lord, the Lord uphold you, my brother, my sister. The Lord grant that all that you will eat or drink, that none of them will harm you or hurt you or defile you or contaminate your life. But rather, everything you will eat or drink or come in contact will be nourishment, with strength, with life to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, I say thank you for answer to these prayers. Take all the glory and all the honor for all you've done for us even in this meeting. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we come to the end of today's meeting. Don't forget next week, uh, Wednesday, we're coming back again, 7 p.m. Hallelujah. Don't forsake the assembling of the word of the people of God. That is the love of God in your heart. And love of God. The Bible says love never fails. Love will never fail you. Love will never disappoint you. So I encourage you, child of God, to love God. I encourage you to walk in the love of God and walk in obedience. You will not be disappointed. Hallelujah. You will not be put to shame. In the mighty name of God. On Sunday, we have a physical standing service. We'll come together. One one for the address of the church is there on the on the comment on the comment session. So please, if you are in Lagos, join us as we come together to worship and bless our God. This is going to be the first Sunday of the month. Yes, yes, we'll come to dance and bless the Lord for all he's done for us. Hallelujah. And then the Easter Sunday, I mean, this Easter week, we'll have the program coming up. You know, the cross is going to be awesome. The cross. That's where Jesus died for us. The cross. So I encourage you, prepare for it. Make sure you're part of that program. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's going to be awesome. And come expecting. I say come expecting. Come expecting. God will touch you. God will bless you as you come in Jesus' mighty name. Before we leave, I encourage you to give. Bible says don't come into God's presence with empty hand. Love God. Give. Hallelujah. Just give out of love. But I assure you also there's a blessing. Don't give because of the blessing. Give because you love God. The blessing will follow definitely. So I pray for you, child of God, that as you give, may the Lord honor his promise in your life. May the Lord cause men to give back to you. Good measure. Press down, shake it together and grind over. May the Lord open doors of favors unto you on every side. May the Lord fulfill your heart desires and meet your every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Father Lord, I say thank you. Blessed be your holy and mighty name of God for the spirit of obedience and the love you are putting in our heart. Even as we have received your word tonight, Lord. Keep your children safe secured even into everlasting kingdom in jesus mighty name i pray amen so child of god as you go stay blessed stay safe the lord keep you safe and above all stay what rapturable jesus is coming again hallelujah have a wonderful night rest if you are somewhere in the day have a blessed day or in the morning have a blessed morning wherever you are may the glory of the lord be your portion in jesus mighty name amen